There's something I want to ask you, Poppet. Something that's been puzzling me. Concerning? Our last weekend at Mother's. You met somebody down there. Met somebody? Oh, 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 Maxine Avery. The girl of your dreams. Well, let's face it, that's a failing of mine. Meaning? If I've met her once, I've met a dozen. You know me. Yes, and I've never known you more enthusiastic. That's the puzzle. What? You've never mentioned her since. And now for the solution, this week's edition of A Life of Bliss. Being the biography of a bachelor with Diana Churchill, Colin Gordon, Sarah Lawson, Hugh Manning, and Percy Edwards. <laughs> Another chapter in the life story of that shy young man, David Alexander Bliss, better known to us as George Cole. <laughs> The girl of your dreams. Yet you've neither mentioned her nor tried to see her from that day to this. It couldn't be more puzzling. Honestly, you know, you, you, you've you got completely the wrong impression. Maxine seemed a, a nice enough girl, but I wasn't all that interested. Don't be silly. I wasn't. Oh, no. You'll have to do better than that. You're forgetting. She came round to tea that afternoon. And? You were in quite a fuss because she was a few minutes late. But I, I, I wasn't all that interested, so why should I be in a fuss? Why should I imagine you were? Oh, it's, it's some time ago. You, you may not remember all that clearly. Ah, but I do. Everything. Waiting for her to arrive. You sitting there looking anxious. Gosh, that, that, that shows how much you remember. You were there. Yes, but not sitting down. No. No, I, I was standing at the window. Uh, um, um... <laughs> how helpful of you to remind me. Well, I, I, I don't see what that proves. I, I, I just happened to, to be, be looking, looking out. out. When Maxine finally appeared. Well, yes. It's all right. I'm only teasing. What time was that? Nine minutes past four. You... <laughs> Roughly. Having established your interest... Have we? Beyond all reasonable doubt. Well, let's, let, let's say I, I was impressed and leave it at that. A anyway, that's, that's how I've got to leave it. Why? Well, she's a ship that passed in the night. Only because you dropped anchor. Yes, and I'm, <laughs> I, I'm sure it's safer that way. After all, a, a rowing boat's no match for a luxury yacht. You're, you're liable to get upset. Well, really, there's only one way to answer that. What? A vast there. I take it you're the rowing boat. Obviously. Well, heave to and listen to me. No, 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 look, Anne, I, I, I wouldn't stand a chance. No, not with a girl like Maxine. Nonsense. She's a trim little craft, I admit. Mm, to say the least of it. She's got nice lines. Oh, wonderful. Oh, so even you noticed. Oh, well, gracious, yes. Yes, if, if that's uh, if that's ship shape, give me a life at sea. <gasps> Dave. <laughs> Sorry, I was, I, I was carried away. By a wave of enthusiasm. And what's wrong with that, pray? Well, the, the whole idea's wrong, that's what. Maxine's got everything she could wish for. A lovely home, rich parents, looks, everything. So? Well, why should she be interested in me? You've just got to cope with this inferiority complex. It's robbed you of one chance already. It has? About two or three months ago. Remember what happened when you were offered promotion? I turned it down. With rather a cryptic comment about success, remember? Uh, no, no point in joining the fire brigade if you've no head for heights. Yes. <laughs> and now look at you. You've got a chance of success with Maxine. And you're seasick at the thought of it. Ah, but have I? That's the whole question. Oh, for goodness sake, Poppy, belay there. And that's my last naval epithet. Well, there's only one answer to that. What? A cure for seasickness. That's more like it. What, um, what would you prescribe? Now, um, let me see. You might try auto-suggestion. Oh, yes, yes, I know. Take a strong line, like, uh, mm, David as good as the next. You repeat to yourself until finally convinced. Exactly. It's worth trying. Is it? Definitely. All right, then. David's as good as the next. Again? David's as good as the next. David's as good as the next. Now, how do you feel? Sorry for the next. <laughs> Never mind. Persevere. Do you, do, you, do you think it'll work? It's bound, if you say it often enough. You can believe the most incredible things. Well, you are a great help, I must say. <laughs> Only joking, I promise. You know, there's one thing about it. You're no worse than the next. Oh, now you're just trying to flatter me. I meant when it comes to lack of confidence. Tony's just the same, you know. Tony? Mm. Lacks confidence? He wouldn't be very pleased if he heard you sounding so surprised. No, but seriously, he always sounds so... Sure of himself? Well, yes. Bluff. Complete bluff. The old story of the hearty man are hiding a sinking heart. Well, I still can't believe it. Tell me, has he mentioned this big deal he's working on? Yes, he has, actually. We're with T.C. Rowland and company. I gather he's got to see the great T.C. Rowland himself. He was supposed to be seeing him this morning. And so he said. And he was as nervous as a kitten. Did you notice him at breakfast? Oh, no, just a second. No, I know you're not serious. Any anyway, do you know what Tony told me? 
that he'd have the whole thing wrapped up by the end of the week. Yes, but that's all from one of the signs. How do you mean? It's obvious, surely. Blowing his own trumpet's only... Well, a symbol of the blues. Well, I say, that's rather good. Ah. <laughs> you can always tell when things are going badly. How? The blacker they look, the more uncertain he feels, the louder he blows. Oh, gosh, I've never detected a false note myself. But then you, you obviously understand him better than I do. Believe me, it pays a wife to try and understand. Otherwise, it'd be like, um... Like what? <laughs> living next door to someone who's taking music lessons. <laughs> Dreadful thought. <laughs> That's not the only reason, though. I mean, if marriage is going to work, a wife's got a part to play. Yes, accompanist. It's jolly important. Yes, and highly skilled, too. Husbands take some following. What's more, you're expected to join in the chorus. Expected to? Tony's as good as the next. Tony's as good as the next. For he's a jolly good fellow. And so say all of us. Now let's get back to you. <laughs> oh, dear. Must we? Definitely. I've got to go and see about the supper. We've got a special treat tonight. Gosh, really? Yes. But you've got to earn it first by ringing up Maxine. Oh, so that's it. Well, it'll have to be something very special if I'm going to... Oh, good gracious, there's Tony. Yes, I know. I, uh, I wonder what he's sounding now. Sounding? Oh, I see. As far as I'm concerned, the retreat. The retreat? Back to the cookhouse. Still, I've got everything ready. It'll only take a few minutes to... Oh, hello, you. Your master's in here. It hello, then. Right off. Oh, where have you been, eh? Out in the garden. <laughs> oh, hello there, David, old boy. Oh, hello, Tony. <laughs> yeah, hello to you, too. <laughs> how, uh, how went the day? Fine. Did you, did you see the great T.C. Rowland? Went round to his office this afternoon. Oh, gosh, rather you than me. He's pretty impressive. Oh, didn't impress me, not for a second. Didn't let him. Not that I've got a big opinion of myself. Oh, anything but. I count myself as good as the next. And so say all of us. <laughs> Sarcasm? No. No, no, of course not. What then? Oh, joining in the chorus. <laughs> you mean the conversation? Uh, that, that goes without saying, actually. What does? That you're a jolly good fellow. You know, as jolly as the next fellow. Um, the next man. Uh, as good as. <laughs> Thank you, I'd say the same for you, only I'd never get my tongue round it. <laughs> Sorry. Ah, don't be silly. Where's Anne, by the way? Oh, she, she's out in the cookhouse getting supper. Cookhouse? <laughs> no, uh, uh, out in the kitchen cooking supper. Yeah, and, and guess what? What? We've got a special retreat. <laughs> special? Oh, sp special treat. Retreat, cookhouse, cookhouse, retreat. No, you'll have to tell me. No, I, 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 I'd much rather you told me about your interview with Mr. Rowland. Now, how did it go? Well? Exceptionally well. I don't want to boast, but it, well, it couldn't have been easier. And it couldn't have gone better. In fact, all highly satisfactory. Oh, dear. <laughs> what, why, oh, dear? What's the matter? Oh, no, nothing, nothing, I'm sure. Do you know why? Why? Because I'm sure you're wrong. Wrong? About, about the interview. It, it can't have gone that badly. <laughs> Do you know, I believe it's worse than usual. Oh, nonsense, Tony. It'll all sort itself out in the end. I wish I could share your confidence. Oh, good gracious. There wouldn't be enough to go around. <laughs> Psyche, what have you been doing today? No, 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 but honestly, I, I, I'm sure things aren't as black as they seem. Did I say they seem black? Well, no, you, uh, you didn't say so. Then I don't understand. Ah, but I do. Oh, well, for goodness sake, don't keep it to yourself. Tell me. <laughs> Perhaps I'm mistaken, but that's definitely what you were sounding. What I was sounding? Yeah, how, how you were sounding. <laughs> and, and that's a pretty good symbol. Uh, sign. Look, David, oh boy, I'm terribly sorry. Perhaps I'm tired, but you'll just have to explain. Well, the more uncertain you feel, the louder you blow. I mean... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> now, just a second. I'll take over now. There's an exit to every maze, and I'm beginning to see a glimmer of light. Blow, sounding, retreat. Sounding the retreat, cookhouse, and blowing my own trumpet. No. Yes! <laughs> not, not, not about you. She, she didn't say it. About, about trumpeters in general. The, uh, p people in general. I must say I'm surprised at Anne. Yes, and I'm surprised at... Su surprised at you. <laughs> for, for, for taking any notice of me. I, I, I don't care what you think of me, I, I deserve it, but, but not about Anne. Especially when it's a question of loyalty. 
For heaven's sake, I'm back in the maze again. <laughs> no, no, no. Look, Tony, you know jolly well she's the most wonderful accompanist. The most wonderful? <laughs> yeah, my most <laughs> wonderful wife. Psyche, what have you been doing today? <laughs> yes, me too. Hello, darling. I'm so oh, happy. Oh, hello, to... dear. <laughs> And how's my little accompanist? Fine. How went things at the... Accompanist? <laughs> I gather you've been having a musical evening. Come and sit down and join the chorus. I... No, no, no. Please, um... please don't try and explain. I've had enough for one evening. Besides, as David pointed out, there's a perfectly simple explanation to it all. Oh, what's that? David himself. What could be simpler? <laughs> Sorry. Only pulling your leg. Oh, I deserve it. Tony, I'm dying to know. How did you get on with Mr. Rowland? Um... Well, I don't want to blow my own trumpet. As if you would. Ah, bless your heart. <laughs> Very well, actually. I'm having dinner with him tomorrow to discuss final details. Oh, gosh, I that's wonderful. I couldn't be more pleased, oh, darling. Oh, uh, by the way, that reminds me, I, I hope it won't be long. I'm looking forward to it enormously. What? Our special retreat. Special? Supper. <laughs> Will it be long? No, it's almost ready. Oh, well, that reminds me. You'll just have time to ring Maxine, David. Oh, dear. Will I? Who's Maxine? Oh, yes, of course, down at your mother's. That's right. She hmm. came round to tea. How did she strike you? Well, speaking purely impersonally, wham. <laughs> How did she strike you, David? Dumb. <laughs> a rowing boat's no match for a luxury yacht. I couldn't agree more. There, there you are, you see. What does it mean? <laughs> Lack of confidence. He wouldn't stand a chance. Oh, so that's what it's all been about. <laughs> but you're on the wrong track. Surely you don't need auto-suggestion to persuade yourself to phone. Think of the girl and you'll find it's automatic. <laughs> All right, then, let's see. I'm thinking. And? Wham. You see? <laughs> know the number? Uh, Bracken, 264. Dial O and anchors away. Yes, all right. You know, there, there's only one problem now. There's no problem. There is, you know. You're, you're, you're forgetting. I, I haven't seen her since that weekend, and it's... Number, oh, please. Oh, oh um, Wham, 264. <laughs> what exchange? Wham. Oh, <laughs> R Bracken, 264. Hold the line. Oh, typical. Never mind. What was the problem? Oh, a an excuse for not ringing her before. Oh, my dear, you have nothing to it. Just say that No, you... no, Ty Tony. What? No advice. It'll only muddle him. Sorry, Poppet, but you know I'm right. Oh, I do indeed. <laughs> oh, dear. What? <laughs> no, you're silly. No, you might tell us. Oh, I, I, I was just thinking of the luxury yacht and a dinghy called David. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, you you'll destroy what little confidence hello. I've got. Oh, oh, hello? Is that you, Maxine? It's dinghy. Oh, we're off. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, David. David Dinghy. Um, <laughs> dinghy Bliss. I might have guessed, and I'm very angry. We meet, we get on well together, I come round to tea, you take me home. We part the best of friends, and from that day to this, not a word. I don't know whether you're going to suggest meeting again, but I wouldn't dream of it now. You've left it too late. When and where? Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, uh, t t tomorrow evening? Where? Um, dinner at the Rothschild. Wonderful. Well, oh, I'll drive down and pick you up. No, 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 don't bother. Oh, no, no bother. It only takes me a quarter of an hour. Yes, but I may be coming in to do some shopping tomorrow, so I'll be there already. I'll meet you at the Rothschild. Oh, jolly good. Time? Uh, seven? Fine. Nice of you to ring. Bye, David. Oh, goodbye. Wham! Boy, I, I don't want to blow my own trumpet, but it couldn't have been easier. What Good did I for you. tell you? No, I, I only hope tomorrow goes as well. Don't worry, I'll be there to give you moral support. Where? At the Rothschild. That's where I'm meeting Roland. Honestly? Yeah, yes, 7.15. Oh, jolly good. Mm -hmm. Odd about tomorrow, you know. It's going to be a big night for us both. Oh, you're right, it is. Not that you've got anything to worry about. Nor have you. Not for a second. <laughs> and so say both of us. <laughs> Somewhere. I'll look for it. Oh, thanks. Oh, Anne? Yes? Oh, what time is it now? Twenty to seven. Oh, jolly good. Clothes brush. Oh, yes, over there. Out of the way, Psyche. Anne? Yes? Clean handkerchief. Second drawer down. All right. Men. <laughs> Helpless. Anne? Now what? I, I'm ready. How, how, how do I look? Now, let me see. Um... <laughs> Yes, but you're biased. 
Oh, will, will, I, will, I, will I pass? I'm sure she'll be most impressed. You look positively... Uh, oh, dear. What, what's the matter? A sign of nerves? Are they being worn over the waistcoat this year? What? Braces. <laughs> Braces? Oh, oh, gosh. Off with your coat. I'll give it a brush for you. Oh, thank you. I'm ready. Oh, good, darling. Time to spare, too. Well, no, I've left some papers at the office. I've got to pick them up. How do I look? Well, let me see. Positively handsome. No, 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 really. Of course. Oh, your heart. Um, I shouldn't wait up for me. No, I, I'm coming now, Tony. Oh, right. Like a lift down? No, no, thanks. I'll probably drive Maxine home. Cheerio, eh? Bye, darling. Goodbye. Good luck. Thanks. I'll leave you. Phew. <laughs> Exhausted. Oh, good gracious. Tony. Yeah? You've left your cigarette case. Oh, thanks. Ah, thanks. There you are. Bye, darling. Good luck. Men. <laughs> Hopeless. But nice. <laughs> May I take your order, sir? Um, oh, no, no, thank you, waiter. I'm, I'm waiting for a yacht. <laughs> for a... Oh, uh, no, no, we're, we're wait, waiting for a girl. Yeah, for, for, for a friend. Oh, hello, David, boy. Oh, hello, Tony. Maxine not here yet? Not, not yet, no. Uh, still, still, it's only just gone seven. Ah, oh, keep you company till she comes. Nervous? Me? Nervous? Yes. <laughs> As I thought, no need to be, you know. No, and I'm not just saying that, I can prove it. I happen to be in the same position myself, apprehensive about my meeting with Roland. I, I'm sorry, I, I don't see the connection. Oh, I'll tell you, su supposing I asked your advice on how to handle him, what would you say? Nothing. I'd be too surprised. <laughs> well, let's take it in the easy stages. Supposing I asked you the best way to get round people in general, what would you say? Um, you'd say flattery, wouldn't you? Well, but in that case, you'd add, there happens to be a snag. You can flatter a nobody by implying he's somebody. But T.C. Rowland's really somebody. A business giant, in fact. And that's much more difficult. Uh, as difficult as complimenting a particularly attractive girl on her looks. She's heard it all before, a thousand times. Anyway, she knows it already, and so does he. So, so what do you do? I'd ask. Oh, oh, yeah, oh yes, I was forgetting. Yes. You, 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 you'd ask, and I'd reply? Uh, simple, Tony, old boy. A question of strategy. First of all, you tell me, don't appear too impressed. Let him think you're used to meeting important people. But, at the same time, subtly imply that of all the important people you've met, nobody's impressed you more. A giant amongst giants. That's the way to flatter him, and that, you'd conclude, is the answer. Oh, gracious, I'm more intelligent than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I don't see what all that's got to do with Maxine. Oh, for heaven's sake, David, the same thing applies. She's a particularly attractive girl. Oh, gosh, now I see. And you must see I'm right. After all, that's your biggest weakness. What? Every time you meet a new girlfriend, you behave like a man who's struck oil. Oh. <laughs> let, let, let's face it, uh, this time I have. Agreed, yes. But if you don't, if you don't want to lose it, control the gush. I mean, it may sound a bit hard, but frankly... Oh, so, sorry, sorry to interrupt, what? but uh, here comes my well. Huh? <laughs> well, just, just coming Ooh. in. Oh, yes. Wow. wow. <laughs> Good luck, old boy. Oh. Hello, David. Oh, hello, Maxine. You, you, you know Tony, don't you? Yes, of Hi. course. I'm so sorry I'm late. I didn't realise what time it was. No, that's all right. It's, it's, it's only ten past seven now, so you needn't have gushed. <laughs> Have I? You're, you're rushed. Look, I must leave you. Oh, dear, must you? Ask David. Uh, actually, I'm meeting somebody myself. Oh. See you later on, perhaps. Mm. Cheerio. 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 Oh, it was sweet of you to ask me out, David. Yeah, it was nice of you to come. What, what are you going to have? Uh, here's a menu, look. Oh, something very light. I have to watch my figure. Oh, gosh, I don't believe that. Why? Well, you've got nothing to watch. <laughs> no figure, in fact. Oh, no, no, no. No, I, I didn't mean it like that. No, on the contrary, I, I meant that, well, um, that you, I mean, that is that... The... Sweet of you to say so. You order for me. Uh, right, huh? That's if I can find our waiter. He's probably trying to avoid me. Avoid you? Well, yes, he, he, he came across when I first arrived, and guess what I said? What? That I was waiting for a... <laughs> um, <laughs> wait, wait, waiting for a friend. And? That's all. I see. It's amazing how easily some people are offended. Um, yes. Yes, it is. I wonder where on a... Oh, ah, oh, there he is now. Oh, wait up, wait. Uh, oh, dear. He's gone again. Don't take it to heart. He's probably busy. Do you come here often? Oh, no, not really. Just not. Um, well, yes, 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 I have been here fairly often. 
With, with other girlfriends. Oh. <laughs> Have you indeed? No, good gracious, yes. And, and they were jolly attractive, too. Do you think you're wise to tell me? Well, there's no sense in denying it. No, that's true. And there's no denying they, well, they, they were quite something. Did you, uh, uh, did you tell them so? Well, obviously, why? Just wondering and waiting. <laughs> uh, how do you mean? Hopefully. Oh, oh gosh, oh, I see. Oh, but th th that happens to be the snag. Snag? Yeah, they were flattered when I said they were attractive. But I, I couldn't say that about you. <laughs> I admire your frankness. Oh, no, 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 you, you don't understand. That's right. They, 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 they were quite something, but, but you're something different. Ah, now, that sounds more promising. What am I? Yeah, a, a giant of a business. <laughs> That'll teach me to ask. No, a, a, a giant of a girl. I will have to watch my figure. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put it another way. I wish you would. The, the others were quite... Wait, oh, there's a waiter again. Wait, waiter! Uh, oh, still busy. You were saying? The others were... Oh, quite something. But, but you're really nothing. You... <laughs> really nobody. You... Oh, God. Now, don't give up. I'm sure it'll get better as it goes along. Now, what were you trying to say? Well, th that you're... With you in a moment, sir. Oh, right. Now, I'm getting stubborn about this quickly, before he comes. They were quite something, but... You're a real busybody. You... <laughs> Honestly. You uh, are ready to order, sir. Oh, oh, there you are, waiter. Um, yes, my, my yacht's arrived now. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my friend's arrived. Uh. Now then, let, let, let me think. Um, what, what, what should we start with? Um, melon? Mm, couldn't be nicer. Uh, well, two melon and two follow. Um, I tell you what I'd adore. Lobster salad. Uh, lobster salad. Two, sir? Please. And uh, two drink? Oh, would you like some wine, Maxine? Sounds lovely. Oh, let me see. Where, where, where's the wine list? Oh, yes. No, I don't drink myself, so I... Oh, then I won't either. Oh, nonsense. If I may suggest, sir, uh, number 33. All right for you, Maxine? I never drink anything else. No, jolly good. Um, half a bottle? Yeah, please. Uh, very well, sir. Well, now we can relax. Oh, no, we can't. We've got a lot to clear up. Giant, nothing, nobody, busybody. What was it all about? Well, it's a bit complicated, actually. I... It'll be easier to begin again. You sure that'd be a good idea? Positive. I, I can tell you what I really think in one word. You can? Yes. Wham. Oh, hello, dear. Oh, well, hello, darling. Did I wake you up? No, of course not. I only came to bed to read. Yeah. How did your dinner go? Very well. Surprisingly well, actually. It's all over. Father signing. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, as good as, anyway. Did you see David and Maxine? Yes, he was still there when I left. There's a hang of your suit there. Look. Where? Behind you. Oh, yeah. Stuart businessman, you know, her Roland. Had quite a tussle over the finance. Tried to shake me with all the old arguments, you know. Big firm, Mr. Fellows, reliable. Even tried the old one about... Your pyjamas yeah. are here on the end of the oh, bed. Oh, yeah, thanks, darling. About what? Oh, lower tender from another firm. Ah, how ridiculous. Do you know what I told him? What? You'd better take it. I should think that surprised him. Surprised him? Oh, his eyebrows set up a new altitude record. <laughs> <laughs> well, not, not that I care what he thought. That sort of thing doesn't bother me. I should think not, indeed. Oh, not for a moment. Yeah, wait, what, what else could I say? Nothing. Uh, Tony, darling, hmm? the hanger is for your suit. Yes, all right. I'll see to it in a second. But you've put... I'll uh, see to it in a second, then. Sorry. I suppose it was a bit tactless. It wasn't tactless in the least. Anyway, what else could you have said? <laughs> Nothing, really. A bit blunt, though. Nonsense. You're worrying over nothing. Worrying? I'm not worrying. I know you're not, darling, and I'm sure you're right not to. What the devil's happened to my pajamas? Well, <laughs> that's what I was trying to tell you. They're on the hanger. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. I'm sure it'll be all right, darling. No, look, and for the last time, I am not worrying. If he doesn't sign the confounded contract, he doesn't sign it, and that's all. I certainly will. But of for goodness sake, so am I. So what the dickens are we talking about? Oh, sorry, darling. Don't be silly. Bless you. Worried to death, ain't you? So we'll soon know the worst. Promise me a final decision within about yeah, 48 coming. hours. Yes, of course. Hello, Poppy. Hello there. No, I, I saw your light was on, so I... No, you're more than welcome. How went your evening? Oh, jolly well. You yeah, wonderfully well, really. You couldn't have gone better. When are you seeing her again? Um, well, I, I, I may be seeing her tomorrow. She, she's, um, she, she's going to ring me about it. 
You're worrying over nothing, I'm sure. Yes, I'm positive. <laughs> I'm not worrying. No, neither am I. <laughs> am I, darling? <laughs> not for a moment. <laughs> and now I think we'd all better get a good night's sleep. Ready for tomorrow. Ready for tomorrow? Ready to face the worst. <laughs> She, she ought to have phoned by now. Stop worrying. I'm not worried. I'll try. When, when, when's Tony expecting to hear about the contract? Today or tomorrow. And I must stop worrying about my new dress. What new dress? The one Tony's going to buy me if all goes well. I say, that's jolly nice of him. Yes, it will be. Will be? He doesn't know about it yet. <laughs> it's absolutely lovely. Oh, so, so, so you've seen it? Tried it on. Oh, good gracious. <laughs> What's wrong with that? I've earned it, surely. You could call it my commission. Well, you're right. You have earned it. And, and if all goes well with Maxine, I'll, I'll buy you a new hat to go with it. Ah, oh, <laughs> I wouldn't dream of letting you. I know just the one. It'll go beautifully. Oh, that, that, that'll be Maxine. L at least I, I hope it will. Hello? Dingy? Yes? Yacht. Good heavens. How, <laughs> how, how on earth did you... I no. worked it out for myself, and I worked out what it meant to. No confidence. Thank you for my lovely dinner. And I'd love to see you this evening. Oh, gosh, that, that's wonderful. I, I'll pick you up about seven. Lovely. I'll say, is that for me? No, David. It's amazing what, what a difference one phone call can make. It's changed everything, even my name. Your name? David Liner. Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. Oh, it's all right. Everything's all right. That's oh, splendid. Oh, good. Including your new hat. New hat? David promised to buy me one. To go with her commission. <laughs> Here, do. <laughs> sure, all right. All right, I'll answer it. Uh, fellows. Roland. Oh, hello. Uh, thought you'd like to know I've signed the contract. You have? Putting it in the post today. Oh, I, I couldn't be more pleased, sir. Uh, thought you'd like to know. Yeah, of course. I'll be contacting you later. Thanks for the dinner. Not at all. Goodbye. Bye. The contract signed. Too oh, dear, jolly good. Well, oh, no, everything's really all right, oh. including Anne's new dress. Oh, for goodness sake, pop it. Oh, bless your heart, <laughs> you can have anything you want. <laughs> and now it's all over, I want to tell you something, darling. You're better than the next. Nonsense. Much better. And so say all of us. <laughs> that was A Life of Bliss. The artists taking part were David Bliss, George Cole, Anne Fellows, Diana Churchill, Tony Fellows, Colin Gordon, Psyche the Dog, Percy Edwards, Maxine Avery, Sarah Lawson, Mr. T.C. Rowland, and other parts played by Hugh Manning. This recorded program was written by Godfrey Harrison and produced by Leslie Bridgemont. <laughs>